Today we're going to talk about the Common Core High School Geometry Congruence and we're going to look at this standard right here. Understanding congruence in terms of rigid motions in particular. Explain how the criteria for triangle congruence, angle side angle, side angle side, and side 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 follow from the definition of congruence in terms of rigid motion. So let's go to our question that we have on our discussion. Rigid motions, wire translations, reflections, rotations, examples of rigid motions. Well, when a figure is transformed using a translation, which is a slide, a reflection, which is a flip over a line, or rotation, which is a turn, um, the image and the preimage remain congruent. This means that these transformations are rigid motions. In other words, the sides and the angles have the same measure. What we're going to do today is we're going to create a triangle using a polygon in GeoGebra in a quadrant chosen by your teacher because you're going to do this on your own or discussion but I'm going to show you how to do it today and we're going to perform two or more transformations such as reflection over a line y equals x or rotation 90 degrees clockwise about the origin and demonstrate that these transformations indeed are rigid motions using the triangle congruence postulates which are also called criteria side 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 angle side and angle side angle so let's go open our geogebra and begin okay first off this is my move graphics view I want to talk about the four quadrants the four quadrants are the four different sections of the XY axis plane so we mar I'm going to mark them using my pen and the quadrants are labeled in the counterclockwise direction and they're always labeled with Roman numerals so I'm on quadrant three. It's just this area. This is this area, quadrant two, quadrant three, and this is quadrant four. So I'm going to begin by creating a polygon in quadrant two. And I'm going to show you how to reflect it over the y and x axes using this tool. So we're in a reflection about a tent line. We're going to go in the middle of the triangle, hover over till we get this highlighted y axis, and it should do it. Let me try it again. and it reflected it. Now try again. We're going to go over the x-axis and now we're going to reflect it over the y-axis and now we're going to go back and reflect it onto itself. And we reflect it onto itself because it's darker. Let me show you how you, if you're not going to reflect over the line, the x or y-axis, how to reflect it over a specific line. And the specific line I'm going to choose is y equals x. You have to put this in lower cases. So we're going to put a polygon in the second quadrant and we're going to reflect it about this line. Try that again. And here it's reflected. Notice A, B, C are in the counterclockwise direction. A prime, B prime, C prime are in the clockwise direction. Because when we reflect it, you are changing the, or the, the orientation of the vertices. Now let me show you how to do the rotations. So let's start in the third quadrant this time. Let's do something different and we're going to rotate it about the origin as our center of rotation. So I'm going to put in parentheses 0 comma 0. So I'm going to go to the fourth one down here. It's called rotate about a point. Select object to rotate, center point, and then angle. Object, center point, and it should come up clockwise 90 degrees. I'll try that again. And we're going to go clockwise 90 degrees. Here it is. Let's check that. Using our segment tool, I'm just I could choose any of these vertices because they map onto the other one. So I'm just choose A. A maps to A prime. And let's check our angle. This is our pre-image, and it's mapped to our image, and it went 90 degrees in the clockwise direction. So this is awesome. We're ready to work on our problem now. So we are going to create a triangle. Um, using the polygon tool and today I just am going to reflect over the line y equals x and also do a 90 degrees clockwise transformation rotation and demonstrate that this these two transformations are rigid motions using side 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 angle side and angle side angle postulates or criteria so we'll start with something in the second quadrant there's our triangle and we're going to reflect it over y equals x so you take the line tool center of the triangle over the line and it reflects. I'm going to move my graphics view. I have to input 0, 0. I input it. Now I'm going to go to this fourth one down. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. Center, 
90 degrees, try that again, it should pop up with a, and let's see if that works. Try it again. I'm just, is my, because my mouse is old. There we go. And here it is. Now this is my pre-image and this is my image. So let's just label these. This is my pre-image or my before. And this is our image. And this is, I'm going to show that this is, this motion, this transformation is a rigid motion or this is, this, um, in other words, that this is transformed using a rigid motion because the pre-image and the image are congruent. And the way we're going to show this is using the side, side, side postulate. So we're going to be showing that triangle ABC is congruent. I mean, two lines and a congruent sign to triangle A double prime, B double prime, C double prime using side, side, side. So we're going to mark it. Well, AC maps to A double prime, C prime, double prime. I'm going to put two slash marks to AB and this match it maps to here. And here, this one side is congruent to this side. Well, just by marking them is not enough information because it just says it but doesn't prove anything. So we're going to use the distance or length tool. They That uses the distance formula. They have it programmed into GeoGebra. So I'm going to find the distance of all these sides. It's a lot faster than doing it by hand. So AC should be the same size. See 1.38. Let's see if this is 1.38. Yes, it is. It worked perfect. I'm trying to move this over, but I guess it doesn't want to move. And let's do B double prime, C double prime, 1.85. And this is all true. So these have all shown that we showed the side, side, side. So now let's try another one. We're going to show angle side angle. These are rigid motions because the image and the pre-image are both congruent. I'll start with one here. And we're going to reflect this. This is our pre-image. We're going to reflect it over the we'll reflect it over the x-axis. So start again. Start that again because I because I moved it around and alright, start again. Let's click on here. There we go. So we're going to show the angle side angle criteria or postulate. Okay, so we're going to pick this angle is going to be in this angle. So this is my pre-image. Let me mark these. This is my pre-image. We're going to show these transformations are congruent. And this is my image. Using a rigid motion because if there is, since it's a rigid motion, these two are congruent. So now let's do angle side angle. Go to here. I'm going to use this. It doesn't matter which side I choose, but I'm going to use AC. And then I'm going to mark C prime. And now let's go measure. Angle tool has to be done in the clockwise direction. Once you keep practicing it, you get really good at it. And let me do the distances. Well, clearly the sides are equal because they're both 1.92. Let's check these angles. Angle C maps to this angle right here, which are both, they're both, it's hard to read, but they're 45.53. And angle A is congruent to angle A prime. Angle A and A, um, A prime are congruent. And the image and the pre-image are both congruent and they're, they are um, 81.3. And you can move these, oops, you've got to move your pre-image, your original, and this will always be true. Of course, your markings go away, but that's all right. So that shows angle, side, angle. Um, the corresponding parts are also congruent as well, because if we just know three parts, let me do this again. We're going to show side, angle, side this time. I'm going to reflect this over the y-axis. Do that again. There we go. We're going to show side, angle, side. So let's make this a little bigger so you can see it. We're going to show side, angle, side, S, a, S, and so I'm going to, well before I do that I want to decide which side and which angle which side. I'm going to go here. On this side, angle, side, and this is my pre-image. Let me label that. 
and this is my image. And so let's go figure out which what is A to B maps to A prime B prime. And let's go let's see if that marks. Okay, and I should have put two lines through here. A prime C prime goes here. And because it's a reflection that the orientation of our vertices have changed, this is side angle side. So let's check that. A B and A prime B prime. They're both the same distance. So to be congruent, all the sides and all, all the sides, there's three sides and three angles have to be congruent. But let's just show you, you'll need at least three parts to show that they are congruent. We're doing the side, the angle, and the side. All of those criteria, angle, side, angle, side, 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 and side, angle, side, all have at least one side. And let's go in the, this, oops, oh, that's because, the reason that worked is because if you, um, if you click in the center of this and you put your polygon in the counterclockwise direction, you would have gotten all the angles, but we're going to try to go do this a little bit slower. B, A, C. These angles both equal 63 degrees. Now what we're going to talk about in the last thing in this in this video is corresponding parts. Corresponding parts. Corresponding parts of a triangle are congruent. So what that means is that, well let's go put these into, let's write this down, triangle ABC is congruent, we'll put a triangle side outside of it, to triangle A prime B prime C prime. And their corresponding parts are going to be congruent. In other words, um, B maps to B prime, so the things that we haven't labeled yet also are going to be congruent. I'm going to change the color. So anything, we just because these three sides are, this side, this angle, this side are congruent, the remaining side and two angles are congruent. So this angle will be congruent to this angle. This side will map and be congruent to this side. And this um, angle, because there was two angles, C will be equal to this C. Those are because corresponding parts of a triangle are congruent. Thank you for watching this video.